Hello, creator of the realms here, and I've just seen the D&D movie. Wow. Hail and well met, friends of the realms. So the Dungeons & Dragons movie Honor Among Thieves was just released, and for its opening weekend has already done $71.5 million at the worldwide box office. Oh, we got him now! <laughs> Ed Greenwood, the original creator of the Forgotten Realms, has some things to say about it. I know many fans of D&D have conflicting opinions of the movie, and we're not here to decide for you if it's good or bad. But instead, we're here to point out five things that the D&D movie either changed from the game or the original Forgotten Realms lore, or got flat out wrong. You're not a lot of fun, are you? Before we jump right into it, we want to be very clear that this video contains spoilers. They may be small spoilers, but they're spoilers nonetheless. So if you haven't seen Honor Among Thieves yet, then save this video and come back to it after you finish the film. And just so we don't give anyone the wrong idea, Ed wanted to say this about the movie. For me, all of these cavils fall into the category of tiny nits that I've picked. The story was fun, the action never flagged, and the movie was a romp. I am so pleased that it's a movie D&D fans can be proud of and not wince at. And on that note, I am Ivan of Many Realms, and these are five things the D&D movie got wrong. Number five. Wild Shape Schmild Schmape. Most D&D players will probably catch the Druid of less than 20th level can't weld shape that many times without a rest 5e rules glitch. It should be twice, max. And the owlbear is not a beast, so she can't become one at all rules glitch. What is that again? Now that. I suspect the new edition of D&D that's being worked on right now will unmake these mistakes by altering the rules. But right now, rules as written, that druid can't become an owlbear and can't weld shape that many times. Bing, 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 bing. Number four. Smarter than you think. The movie makes a joke of the intellect devourers ignoring the D&D party because their intelligence is too low. Except, it's not. The problem is the character stats have been published. It was one of the goodies on D&D Beyond. You can get the character sheets for the movie characters. Now, the lowest intelligence amongst our main party of adventures is Olga the Barbarian. Her intelligence is 11. Intellect devourers can detect intelligence scores of three and up. We know this is another rule snafu, which is just, I hate to say it, lazy writing. All the writers had to do was have a character say, oh my goodness, lesser intellect devourers. I've only ever seen one before. They're very rare or something of the sort to signal to us that this is a new subspecies. And if you did that, the problem would just go away. Number three. Hello, Moto. Okay, now we come to one that is really unbalancing. In the movie, users of sending stones can chat back and forth like they're using cell phones. And they do a four-way conversation, to which the rules lawyer in me says, nope. As the guy who created the original Sending Stones and the Forgotten Realms, but leave that for a moment, and saw the Sending Stones get even more nerfed than my original when they appeared in the Magic of Faroon sourcebook for very good game balance reasons, which should have been maintained in the movie to add difficulty and tension. In my original, Sending Stones come in matched pairs, through which a bearer can cast a spell that sends a 25 word or less message to the holder of the other stone. And the moment this single message is sent, both stones are useless until next morning. And you could say, well, who cares? If you allow that at your gaming table, your characters or anyone else, like the bad guys, to have cell phones that they can talk freely back and forth, guess what? You can never have a secret again. Your army can never sneak up on somebody again. Every merchant will know uh, to adjust their prices instantly when there's a shortage half a continent away. In other words, all the bad crap of modern real world society will be dumped into your fantasy setting. Well, if you want that, I have this game that you should play. It's called Real Life. Number two. Eh, 
Not bad for a dead lady. This one isn't so much on screen as in the cast list. There's a Zulkir, Demetra Flas. She appears on the cast list, which is a real achievement because she's been dead since 1385 and was not brought back by Zastam as one of his undead Yesthians, so she shouldn't be appearing anywhere. And that happened on stage in Realms Lore, canon. Richard Lee Byers' novel, Wizards will tell you, uh, the novels aren't canon. Nope, they are. Wizards of the Coast cannot alter the original Realms Agreement unless they negotiate with me, and nobody has so much as contact. So that original agreement remains in force. So the novels still are canon. Before we get to the number one thing the movie got wrong, let me remind you to head over to patreon.com slash edgreenwood where you'll find the best and most exclusive realms lore anywhere. Fully narrated write-ups, weekly posts, extended interviews, behind the scenes, and so much more. He also plays the loot. Not relevant. Sign up and become a true protector of the realms. Number one. I'm just not that kind of bard. Now this one is a little bit more of a judgment call as opposed to a gotcha. The main character on screen is Edgen the Bard, Chris Pine's character, Edgen the Bard. But we never see him being a bard at any point in the movie. What is it exactly that you bring to this? He never uses a class ability, he never casts a spell, even though the party gets into many situations in the movie where any sane bard would use their spells and abilities to aid, well, you know, the friends they're depending on to save their life. He never heals or buffs. Yes, he fast talks and uses his charm, but those are bard stereotypes, not bard specific class abilities. Any character may or may not be charming and glib. Many, many rogue characters are. In this particular case, this character wears a harper pin. Harpers can play buffoons, but they are short-lived walking targets if they really are buffoons. Scriptwriters, we should see Edgen's hidden depths, particularly when his survival and that of all of his companions depends on it. And there you have it, five things the D&D movie got wrong. Did you notice anything else the movie changed? Let us know in the comments if you did. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and let us know. Subscribe if you want to see more videos from the Sage himself, and hit the bell icon if you want to stay up to date on all of our releases. Thank you so much to everyone that made it to the end of this video. Now, as promised, here's Ed explaining what he thought of the movie in full, unedited detail. However, I do want to add a big caveat, a really big caveat. For me, all of these five cavils I've just pointed out, and there are more, but all of these cavils fall into the category of tiny nits that I've picked. Or to put it another way, I don't care about them. The story was fun, the action never flagged, and the movie was a romp. I am so pleased that it's a movie D&D fans can be proud of and not wince at. So, you know, when somebody who knows nothing about Dungeons & Dragons, they've just heard the name, but they've seen the movie, turns around to you, a D&D &D player and fan, and says, so that's D&D. &D. You can say, yep, that's D&D. &D. Not, no, it's not really D&D, &D. it's not that bad. You don't want to be in that situation. This movie will not put you in that situation. More than that, as the creator of the realms, hello, creator of the realms, uh, I was so pleased that this movie incorporated so much realms lore, both obscure and right out there flapping in our faces, that I was overjoyed. Most of all, far more of the settings that you saw in the movie looked and felt like the realms to me than I thought any movie would manage. So, thumbs up from me. I've seen the movie twice so far, and I will take friends to see it a time or three more. So, well done and thank you. Let's have more D&D &D movies like this one.